Hey guys, in this video we'll be discussing about transferable objects by looking at examples using array buffer, web workers and structured cloning. Let's move on. Transferable objects are objects that can be transferred to different contexts. For example, when we create a web worker, a new web worker context is created inside the browser and you cannot access resources of main thread from web worker and vice versa. But we can pass transferable objects to different contexts without creating separate copies of the resources that they are using. Let's understand how message passing works in context of web workers. Whenever you are sending objects from one context to another via post message, the objects or data that you are posting are structurally cloned. During structured cloning algorithm, it checks if the object is not structurally clonable, it throws an error, otherwise it continues. And secondly, if the transferred object is not transferable, then again it throws an error, otherwise it proceeds with the cloning. So let's understand structured cloning now. So we are back to the best place to learn JavaScript, which is a browser's console. Let's start off by creating an array buffer. Var p new array buffer. And if you see AB, it has one byte length. And what happened internally was it created a new instance of array buffer, but it also created a new memory space of one byte length. Now, if I call this method called transfer of array buffer object, what happens internally is that a new cloned array buffer is created, but it points to the same memory space that was created during the initialization of first array buffer. Let's take a look at the visualization. When you created a new array buffer instance AB, it pointed to a newly created memory space of one byte length. Now when you call ab.transfer, what happens is a new array buffer AB underscore T is created. And now the memory space of one byte length belongs to this newly created array buffer. And the connection between AB and the memory space is lost. That is, AB can no longer access the memory space that was created during its own initialization. Let's take a look at it in the console now. So you can see this array buffer AB has one byte length. You can also see one written here inside these curved braces. Now let me call transfer and I'll assign it to AB underscore T variable. If I log AB now, you can see the array buffer has zero length because the memory that was created during the instantiation of array buffer now points to ab underscore t. Let's take a look at ab underscore t now. As you can see ab underscore t has an array buffer of byte length 1. Let's verify whether it's the same memory space or not. So in order to verify, I'll create an end date array. But before that, let's create a new array buffer all over again. I'll create an int it array new so now this int it array points to array buffers memory space that was created during initialization of ab now let's just change the 0th index to 10 once I do that you can see the new array buffers memory space would have 10 inside it. Now, if I clone this array buffer using transfer var ab underscore t, you can see ab no longer has any length. It no longer has any memory space associated to it. And the intate array that I created also does not point to any memory space and it does not have any length whatsoever. But since we have transferred this array buffer to ab underscore t, if I create a new intate array, I a let's say n, uh, I'll say transfer t and int it array, and I use the cloned array buffer, you can see that it has 10 inside the 0th index. And this is how we can see that transferable objects transfer the memory space, but as soon as they do, they detach the previous association which was there with the original array buffer. 
let's move on to the structure cloning part now so let's try to structurally clone array buffer now var a b array buffer and var a b underscore t is equal to structure clone a b so you can see a b points to one memory space and a b underscore t also points to one memory space what about transferable thing that we just discussed so what happened now is that structured clone created a deep copy of array buffer and pointed it to ab underscore t but it also created a deep copy of the memory space that was being used by array buffer instance so how can we use transferable thingy inside structured clone it's pretty easy so if you are creating a structured clone here you see there's a second argument called options it's an object and one of the properties of this object is transfer and it expects an array and inside this array you need to pass in the things that you actually want to transfer so here we want to transfer ab and now if i clone it ab underscore t has one memory length and you can see ab has zero memory length so i hope that uh, array buffer dot transfer and structured cloning dot transfer is pretty much clear to you the next thing would be you guys to try out the intent array thing the intent array exercise with structured cloning and then you will be pretty much done with the fundamentals of how transferable objects work now why are we studying this so it's always a bad thing to perform intensive tasks on the main thread because it blocks the ui web workers run on a separate thread and isolated context also since you are transferring memory there is no duplication of memory and less chance of memory leakage another point is that since after transfer the previous reference no longer points to that memory space it is quite secure and zero chance of corruption of data and lastly once the work is done it can be transferred back to the place that we want to hey guys so let's do some web worker coding now so i've created a new function called create web worker and i'll attach it to the button which loads the worker and inside main js i'm creating a new worker using the worker.js file and here i have this on message event so let's just console log whatever we are receiving and let's just console log data that you want to send and dot post message uh let's create a new array buffer buffer 1 and let's just pass it as is okay so let me just attach it back okay, nice so let's just load worker so i'll click this we want to the next and so you see we have this worker js created and by context isolation i mentioned that we have this worker.js so it has its own isolated context you cannot access things that are present inside worker js and worker js cannot access things that are inside top let me show you an example so i create this variable here var temp and i created i assign 10 to it so if i log temp i get 10 here if i changed my context to worker js and then i try to type in temp here i get temp is not defined why because temp is actually preside present inside the context of top which is the main thread and worker js has a different context so after, since we are done with that let's move on to what's happening inside the worker so if you see this code we created a new array buffer and we are posting it to web worker and inside worker js we are just console logging the data data is nothing that we are it's just that what we are sending from the main thread so uh, i'll console log array buffer here uh, i'll also type in main and inside worker js i'll say this is worker and comma ev dot data so let's load this now i'll remove the debugger and we have array buffer from main thread and we have array buffer from worker thread let's try to save 
array buffer of worker globally so you see it says fail to save temp variable because array buffer one is actually present inside the context of web worker so in order to save this we have to change the context to worker js now we can store it as global variable but my point was that uh, you see we have array buffer it points to one memory space and the array buffer present inside the worker also points to one memory space and you can make out by now that they both point to different memory spaces so just like when we structurally cloned array buffer without passing in the transfer property to the structured clone object the same way web worker also structurally clones the array buffer or transferable objects we need to explicitly specify the objects that we actually want to transfer so just like in structured clone we have transfer property if you see in the post message we have a second property called transfer let me just yeah we have a second property called transfer which expects an array just like structured clone dot transfer array and here we can specify the array of transferable objects and now you can guess that if i click on this button the main array buffer oh, sorry i need to change the context uh, let me load it again the main array buffer has zero length because it was transferred to web worker and the web worker array buffer now has byte one length so initially the main web worker created a memory space and then it transferred its memory space to web worker now web worker has access to that particular memory space and the detachment has occurred between the main array buffer and the memory space now let's try posting back array buffer to the main thread so i'll listen to the message and i'll console log main message and ev dot data and inside worker js i'll post message ev dot data i will use options and then i'll transfer in the ev dot data let's try this now let's load the worker and what's happening here is that there's a chain being formed you create an array buffer inside main then you pass it to web worker web worker works upon it and then passes it again back to the main what happens is transferring of array buffer is occurring here so if i store main threads array buffer inside the console you see the byte length is zero because we transferred the array buffer to worker inside worker js as well the array buffer's length is zero and since it also transferred it back to main and now the message that we received has the actual memory length of byte one let's see an example of indent array now so let's quickly take a look at the indent array example so i'll remove this log here i8a and i'll provide array buffer here and you see i'm just transferring array buffer here i'm not transferring indent array and i posted this message inside worker js i'll firstly create a new indent array and i'll use ev dot data here and i'll print this and i'll then change it to 20. so inside main js let's assign a value to it which would be 10 and here as soon as we receive it new i8a int 8ra ev dot data i'll just print this so i'm creating a new indent array with the array buffer assigning 10 to the zeroth index passing in array buffer that's it i create a new indent array using the same array buffer and then i change the value at the zeroth index 
then I'm transferring the array buffer back and here I created again new instance of entity array using the same buffer and then I'm console logging it let's see what happens now so I'll click on load worker so this entity array which is in worker it received the array buffer it received the transferred array buffer so it had 10 because it points to the same memory space and then main message also points to the same memory space that was being used inside the worker that's why the zeroth index has value of 20. so this was a small example i hope the transferable objects concept was clear to you uh, see you in the next video guys